Hi, and uh, welcome to my workshop. Um, I'm just about to do um, uh, a fitting of a new chuck that I have. It's a uh, 5C collet chuck, um, and I'm going to fit it to my AL250G. Um, which is a, a lathe, it's a Chinese lathe um, sold by Heron Forbes in Australia. Um, I've had it for a little while now and I've just decided to upgrade to a uh, collet chuck for better concentricity. Now, one of the things that occurred to me before I did that is I wouldn't mind checking out the run out on the actual lathe itself first because obviously the chuck that I install can only be as accurate as the, um, the headstock and the, the um, spindle. Um, and so I've had a quick look at that now and you'll see the setup I've got. I've just got a uh, hundredths of a millimetre um, uh, test gauge um, straight onto the spindle, onto the back plate of the spindle. Um, for my mill, or sorry, my lathe, um, that um, spindle plate, it directly attaches to the shaft um, and so it's um, as close to um, the, the, the base setup as I can possibly get. Um, now one of the things I'm looking for here is run out but I'm also looking to see whether or not I've got any wear in the bearings. Um, and one of the things you might be able to see just, uh, just here is a little mark that I've put on um, which marries up with the lowest point, or oh, sorry the highest point on the, on the plate. So as I turn this you'll see it dips down by about a hundredth of a millimetre there um, and then as it comes up to the mark it goes high by a hundredth of a millimetre. So that's two hundredths of a millimetre over its circumference which is not awful. Um, I would love to get it better um, but it's not too bad. One of the things that I am happy with though is the fact that um, the high and the low spot um, are consistent, which means that it's uh, positioning of the, um, of the spindle um, or possibly the, the actual uh, machining of the, the front spindle plate um, rather than uh, bad bearings. Um, if I had bad bearings, it would be more likely that that would move as it went around, um, but as you can see, it's pretty consistent, um, which is great. Now, what I'm going to do, um, the chuck that I've got happens to marry up to the holes and the plate, uh, or the, the registration on this plate, which is fantastic. It was really more luck than good management, to be quite frank. Um, what it doesn't have though is threaded holes so the original chuck that came with this it's actually got um, it's actually got holes uh, that are threaded in the chuck whereas the new chuck that I've got the um, the holes are just straight through so it's designed to take an M8 bolt and what I've done is I've gone and gotten myself some nuts from good old Bunnings uh, if you can see those, yeah, there we go. Um, some M8 nuts, um, which should do the trick holding that in place. Anyway, what I'm going to do next um, is I'm going to um, I'm going to put the chuck on there, um, and then I'm just going to get that um, aligned um, just by tapping it into place with and with this dial gauge to, um, to see where the high point is. Um, I'm also going to factor in the uh, two hundredths of a millimetre um, uh, run out that I've got on the back plate um, and I'm, I'm going to use that mark also to make sure that um, uh, I know where the, the, the run out on the plate is. Um, what I'm going to try and do is use uh, any slop that I've got or any um, movement that I have between the registration of the back plate and the chuck to try and actually get that concentricity or get that uh, run out taken out. So I'll be back in just one sec. Okay, so this is the little 5C chuck that I've got. And these are the uh, these are some bolts, some high tensile bolts I got 
for it to fit into the back plate. Um, now if you want to see a really good breakdown of this chuck um, and, and how it works and all the rest of it, um, Stefan Gottswinter has got one on it. Um, if it's not exactly the same as this one, it's indistinguishable from it, so it's a really good place to go. Um, what I'm now going to do is just quickly fit this. This. And what you can see is I'm actually just going to have to take a little bit off these bolts before I go any further. I got them a bit oversized um, and I'm just going to have to cut those down so they fit correctly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I've just cut the bolts down so that they should be the right length. Um, I'm going to fit the chuck. Now, the best way I've found to do this um, is just to pop it on and then bring the tailstock up to support it like this, which just means I don't need five hands. Um, what I'm now going to do is just... Hopefully I haven't. Oh. Okay. There we go. Just find the alignment point for the bolts, like so. And um, what you can't really see um, is just I've, I've got about the perfect amount sticking out. I've got some nice clearance between the back plate and the um, uh, the. Or the back plate of the spindle and the the um, the head. So now um, the fiddly, horrible thing eh, is to get these nuts on, um, especially around my headstock, which is or my um, carriage, which is a bit of a pain. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is just pop these into the spanner, like so. Slide the bolt back, and then. Use the use the um, uh, Allen key to just snug that up. Now what I'm doing is just really, really lightly snugging this up at the moment. Um, hey. yeah. Note to self: use the open end, not the closed end. Brainiac. Okay, so once again, it's going to bring the nut up. Ugh. It's so much easier with the closed end, but then you've got to try and get it out. Um, the fiddliness of machining. So what I've just done there is I've just aligned the nut with um, a little gap my lathe has um, just here which is, it's just a little cutout that's designed to allow you to get enough clearance to get the bolt out um, when you're using bolts normally. What I'm doing is I'm just using that to be able to get my finger in. So, doing this, getting my finger in there um, to align it. Yeah. And then snugging it up. So not too painful all in all. There we go. Now, I'm just going to pop, well first things first, 
I'm just going to give the chuck a little clean so we have some sense of how round it actually is because obviously if there's any uh, grease or debris or anything you know dirt on there it's going to affect the reading so uh, now what I'm going to do is just pop my test gauge and then bring that up to zero now so on my test gauge my dial indicator um, is that is to the right they'll say clockwise is the plunger moving away from me and anti-clockwise is the plunger moving towards the body of the, the indicator so now I'm just going to turn that and let's just have a quick look let's bring it up so you can see what's going on here okay so I'm just turning that now and bizarrely I've probably got maybe one hundredth of a millimeter of run out in that already not even I'd say it's probably you know half of a hundredth one two hundredth which so that's that's the high point there and I'm just going to use a soft hammer because we're so close already I'm just going to snug these up a little bit so that the movement, any movement I make with the hammer is not too exaggerated. There we go. Right, so now I'm just going to turn this and we really have almost nothing in that so it's going to re-zero it and it's probably one hundredth two hundredths like we're at a point where even just the settling in of the gauge after I've tried to zero it is um, enough to throw it out by more than the actual chuck is out so right now I'm seeing a two hundredth one two hundredth there probably and it's about there so if I give that a little, little tap, and we're, we're down to maybe even less than that, like a quarter, a four hundredth of a millimetre, um, which is, quite frankly, it's just tiny. I mean, um, it's hard to explain just how small that is except that that's to the point where uh, if something was was over by that amount you could virtually use a bit of uh, polish to bring it in it's it's just tiny so like I'm incredibly impressed with the amount of run out in this now literally the chuck has less run out than the outside of my plate which 
leads me to believe that the inside of the plate is more can more accurate than the outside is but just looking at that now that has nothing worth talking about in it which is just amazing anyway um, I almost wish it had been out by a bit more so I could show you a little bit more um, but that's my chuck now uh, centered and ready to use um, so the next thing I'm going to do is just show you a couple of the collets that I've got um, and then fit one of those and um, and then we'll be done okay so if you can see that that's uh, these are how the collets come so this is a 15 millimeter collet so these are uh, they're 5C collets which I believe were originally all designed to be um, uh, to be imperial sizes but um, this is actually uh, 15 millimeter so the thing about 5C collets is they're designed for work holding um, whereas the ER collets are actually designed for um, for tool holding so these if you have a look I don't know if you can see inside there unfortunately it's a bit hard for me to there we go let's see if we can bring that up there we go so if you can see inside there they've got quite a big work holding surface it goes down about an inch short you know 25 millimeters I should be talking in um, so it gives you a lot of gripping power whereas the ER collets they've got a much smaller surface they're really just designed for, for tool bits you can use them for holding work they just just don't get quite as good a grip on it as all so the way you fit one of these is inside here there is a um, uh, a screw thread which marries up with this and then when you turn the key it actually rotates the block inside which is which has the thread cut into it and so what it's actually doing is tightening up this thread so when I put this in if I can what I've got to do is I've got to just locate you'll see that there's a slot here I've got to just locate the pin gently there we go so I've located the pin now what I'm going to do is tighten this up and you'll see nice You've just got to push on it slightly just to make sure that it engages and then pretty quickly you'll see it's starting to go in like that now. Okay, and once it engages with the collet, then it'll or the collet chuck, it'll then start actually clamping down on the work. Wait, there we go. Now one thing that's probably hard to pick up from this is this collet chuck feels really, really smooth. Um, and it's straight out of the packet. I haven't done anything to it at all. Um, I'm, it's really, really surprisingly good. Okay, so that's engaged now. Now, as I tighten it up from here, it'll actually close the collet up. So they only close up by a very small amount, like a millimetre or so, obviously depending on the size of the collet, and give you a really good concentric work holding. So that's really what I'm after. Um, I'm not going to check the concentricity of the collets just yet, I'm going to do that at a later date. Um, but anyway, just a really quick video showing this collet chuck going on, um, I hope that helps anybody that's interested in getting one of these. Cheers.